dan ganggu. something no 7 30 maybe i don't know so i'm starting from here to zurich station and then take the train over to frankfurt and i'll see you back in time in Frankfurt after um, some delay on the trains. Suddenly we had a technical problem in one of the planes and uh, uh, sorry trains. So we had a technical problem on one of the trains and had to change in Basel. But now still early enough in Frankfurt. Let's continue. Okay, so my first flight uh, with uh, Air Canada to Toronto. It's going to be roughly uh, almost a nine hour flight and we'll see how it goes. So let's see what we have here. Uh, the amenity kit, um, yep, the menu, and uh, of course, a uh, drink in flight. And when I was just ready to go and have some sleep, my wonderful seat would not deflate. I was feeling like I was sitting on a balloon. Luckily, I was able to change seats. Approaching Toronto Pearson around six o'clock in the evening and it's dark, obviously it's winter time. First time transiting through Toronto Pearson Airport. What a chaos in front of every gate down in the main hall. Luckily, I spent the next three hours in the lounge waiting. Now that was a quick visit. Next flight, 10 hours, 30 minutes to Santiago de Chile. In Santiago, I spent my first three nights at Hotel El Bosque Ebro, which is located in the eastern side of Santiago, El Golf and Nueva Las Condas district, which is only a few steps away from important shopping centers. Very efficient way to get around Santiago is to take the Santiago Metro, which is a rapid train system serving the city. 
It currently consists of seven lines, numbered 1 to 6 and 4A, 136 stations and 140 kilometers of revenue route. The Santiago Metro carries around 2.5 million passengers daily. Here a giant mural from Mario Toral, which is a Metro Arte initiative, a state-sponsored project with the goal of transforming the metro stations into cultural displays. In Santiago, I visited the Chilean Museum of Pre-Columbian Art, which was founded in 1981. Today, the museum houses unique works of art that demonstrate American culture diversity, with pieces more than 3,000 year old, chinchorro mummies, ceramic, metal and stone works, true works of art of the Mayans and Aztecs. After a long sightseeing day in Santiago, well-deserved dinner at Rubaya Chile, one of the best restaurants I know of for meat or seafood. And although it's not very cheap, if you want a good service and good quality food, go to Rubaiyat. In Santiago, you can find a lot of old palaces. One of them is the Cusinio Palace, which represents a time in Santiago's urban history when large European style mansions were built in neighborhoods like uh, Dieciocho and Ejercito. The palace dating from 1882 is a tangible footprint of mining in Chile. The Cusinio family owned the silver mines in uh, Chañarchillo and the coal mines in Lota. Unfortunately, I was not allowed to take pictures inside, but it's worthwhile visiting. On my way again, since I plan to continue my travels in uh, Patagonia, I flew down to Puerto Montt from Santiago, rented a car, and drove on to my hotel in Puerto Varas, where I'd been before. Let's discover Cochamó, finally back in Patagonia after COVID. This time, the trip takes me down to a village called Cochamó. On the left here, you can see Mount Osorno, which I've covered in one of my previous uh, videos about Patagonia. The commune of Cochamó has been established in 1979. Recently, ecotourism has become a constantly growing activity in the area. The population of Cochamó is mostly of Spanish origin, but there are also Germans, Italians and a young Czech couple living there. Another day, another trip. I was told that it was worth it to go to Estaquilla Beach, which is a small fishing cove located approximately 100 kilometers uh, west of uh, Puerto Montt and Puerto Varas. And as you can see, some of the sections are only accessible with 4x4 cars. So hey everyone, we are in uh, Punta Estaquilla, which is about uh, 50 kilometers away from Puerto Varas. It was about a one and a half hours trip, but it's so worth it if you look at the beach and what's around it, all these rocks and waves, it's beautiful. We are at the Pacific. So uh, let's enjoy this walk. Chile has so many of those undiscovered places 
And if you think there's hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of uh, unused beach, no people, wild, just wonderful. Let me end part one of this adventure with a view on the turquoise waters of Bay Estaquilla. See you in the next episode. Part two is coming soon. <laughs>